In this beginner tutorial, we're going to use After Effects to create a convincing UFO flyby video that's designed to look like handheld footage shot with a cell phone. Once we've launched Adobe After Effects, we'll see the start screen. And while it does a lot of important stuff, we're going to start from scratch with a blank project, which is After Effects default, so we can just close it. First things first, we need to add some footage to our blank project. File Import works, of course. But there are lots of ways to do things in After Effects, and a quicker way is to simply double-click on the project panel to open up the Import dialog box. Or, if you have your footage window open in your Finder or Explorer, like I have here, we can also simply drag elements from their folder into the project panel. Whichever way you choose, make sure to import Background 4K, Corn Moon, Lamp Post, UFO, and UFO Audio. Clicking on each element reveals important information at the top of the project panel. Background is a 4K video clip shot at 24 frames per second. Corn Moon is 1280 by 720 at 2997 frames per second. Lamp Post is an Adobe Photoshop file with transparency. And UFO is a simple 3D model created in Cinema 4D and exported as a QuickTime animation file with transparency. One way to tell if an element has transparency is if the description includes millions of colors plus. The plus usually indicates an alpha channel, which is used for transparency. We can also double-click any element to open it in the Clip Viewer, where we can play back the clip with the spacebar and click on the checkerboard at the bottom here to confirm that this element is in fact on a transparent background. And the last clip is our audio file. In After Effects, we do our design work using compositions. Making one is as easy as selecting a menu item, using its associated shortcut, which you can see in the menu, or in our case, we're going to create a new composition by selecting our background 4K element and dragging it onto our comp icon at the bottom of the project window, the one that looks like a little film frame. You'll notice that quite a few things have changed on screen. A new item has shown up in the project panel, named the same as our background layer. Click it and see that the new comp has inherited the size and the frame rate of the clip we just dragged on the comp icon which is perfect for our project. If we want to rename the comp so it's more distinctive in the project panel, we can select it, press Enter on the keyboard, and edit it. In my case, I'll get rid of the 4K at the end. In addition, we now have a comp window here, which is where we can see the results of our work, and a timeline, where we control animation, navigate time, and stacking order, among other things. Like most other Adobe apps, there are a lot of panels available to us, some of them visible by default, and others accessible through the window menu. One panel that we'll use again and again is the preview panel, which contains playback controls so we can check our work in full motion. You can also initiate playback by tapping the spacebar, as long as the comp window or the timeline window is active when you do. Panels can be docked together in tab groups. For this project, the important panels to have open are the ones I've mentioned so far, as well as the Effects and Presets panel, and the Info panel. These should all be open by default, unless you've loaded another workspace or otherwise modified things. If they aren't visible, you can just reload the standard workspace, or if you don't want to do that, you can choose them individually from the Window menu. Make sure they're all open and available, and you're ready to start working on our UFO project.